What's going on everyone? It's me and welcome to the first real episode of Freylix Arms. I really do appreciate you guys checking out the channel and I'm really excited to start filming for this channel because I've been thinking about this for a really long time and I really, 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 really am excited about doing it. But before we get into today's video, we got to get some food. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, even their diet stuff is good. That's how you start out every good video is with some chips and salsa. So what's today's video gonna be about? Oh, I need a knife, I need a knife. I need a knife. We have a package from our friends at Primary Arms. If you remember in the first video of the channel where I told you guys about my uh, AR that I'm building, this one right here, um, I built this whole thing so far. Uh, you, you know, the whole shebang, it's it's not hard to do. If Oh God, I'm just rocking you guys like crazy. Oh God. <laughs> it, it's not hard to do to build an AR it's really not, it's not, I mean, there's there's almost nothing to it. I mean, I could show you guys how to do it. I might do that in a later video, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna show you guys uh, what we're doing today. So, a lot of you guys might be asking yourself, what, uh, whoa, what kind of AR are you building? Is it gonna be like a 5.56, 300 blackout? Um, it is gonna be a 5.56, 223, but there's a kicker to it. And yes, I, I ordered from Primary Arms, as I said earlier. I got this guy right here. A lot of you understand this now. And for you, those of you that do, awesome, that's great. This looks a lot like this, except for one difference. This is perfectly cylindrical, and this has a dubafloger on the bottom. Well, in saying that, you would be right. It does have a dubafloger on the bottom. Let's take that bad boy off. So I just loosen up the uh, the buffer tube, lock nut, castle nut thing, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to try not to lose the uh, takedown pin uh, spring in the process. All right, there's our uh, buffer tube spring and our buffer, the actual buffer. I think it's just a carbine buffer, carbine, carbine, however you want to say it. Beans, nothing special, no biggie. I'll take this off and there's a lot of lube on this thing so much lube on the shaft stock buffer tube bye bye so new buffer tube so we're gonna go on there clockwise until we get to the hole and that's pretty close to the hole honestly that's pretty darn close i'm gonna put that spring back in there for the pin I'm not real sure what this pin is called but it's very important and i've lost a lot of them because <laughs> i'll spin it and it'll you know, up in the air. So, get back in the hole, go home. Boom, like magic. Make sure that takedown pin still works. Oh yeah, like a charm. What's the difference between this buffer tube and that buffer tube? Well, I'll tell you what the difference is. Boom, and yeah, I've got my vice outside. I'm, I'm not worried about this right now. I'm just gonna get it tightened. Well, this right here, ladies and germs, is for a stock. This isn't for a stock. This big black shelf isn't for a stock. It's for a brace! Oh yeah, I've got the CAC uh, blade pistol stabilizer. So what this does is, and the reason I went for the CAC is because it's got these dimples right here, which is super nice. So, and it's got this set screw down here in the bottom, so I can set this bad boy to whatever position I want. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Check that out, that's freaking cool, right? Oh no, I shouldered it. Oh shit, everyone lose their minds. What, what's the point of this for you, for, you, for you guys that don't know? Even though this looks a lot like this, it ain't. This right here is for a pistol. This is a pistol brace. This is for a rifle. So what does that mean? 
what that means is is that this right here this lower this fully built lower at this point i'm going to be using it to build an ar pistol now a lot of you probably have heard this term before but there's there's two different types that are basically exactly the same of uh, the the there's the ar pistol and then there's the short barreled rifle or sbr if you're savvy with your acronyms so the difference is this part this is the only difference so on a short barreled rifle it's exactly what it sounds like it's a regular rifle kind of like my 300 blackout right there it's just like that except it's got a really short barrel but you can have adjustable stocks on it you can have whatever stock you want and you can shoulder it no problem which it's not a problem anyway and i'll get to that in a second so the thing about this is is that i don't have to send in a freaking 200 dollars tax stamp to the atf in order to build this and just own it so instead of the stock being adjustable um, it's got a stabilizer or brace on it and I can just adjust it to whatever position I want torque down the set screw thanks to all those dimples in the CAC uh, buffer tube and away I go with my day and the, the, the thing about it is is that that's in my opinion that's definitely the way to go um, because I'll tell you why I'm hungry so I'm going to tell you why I'm eating so the reason that that's a thing that that's a big deal yeah, I could, I could pay the $200 tax stamp, but one, first of all, by not doing that, I save money. And by saving money, my wife gets less upset with me. She doesn't get angry, she gets upset. And, you know, for, for fair reason. So, with that being said, um, I save money. And if you, as a person, you file for your tax stamp to have a SBR or a suppressor or whatever the hell you're trying to build or own or whatever. It is in your name. So if I were to build an SBR and leave it at my dad's house, guess what? That's super illegal. Guess what happens if I build an AR pistol and leave it at my dad's house? Nothing. Which nothing would happen anyway. Who's going to be going kicking down random people's houses looking for shit that doesn't belong to them? And instead of having a six position adjustable stock, this has two, four. This has 12 different positions you can adjust it to. And you know, they're very minute, very tiny increments of adjustment. But at the same time, you can get that puppy in the perfect sweet spot and torque that sucker down and this isn't gonna move at all. And that's one of the reasons I went with this kit. Got this kit on primary arms. They were having a sale. This right here by itself, the Shockwave Blade, it normally goes for about 50 bucks by itself. And this tube right here goes for about 20. They had a sale going on for both of them for like 48 bucks or something like that. This kit is no longer available. The day I ordered it was the last day you could get it. So if you go on there and try to find this now, they might restock, they might not, but for now, as of today, this you can't get this. So I got I think I got a killer deal on it. So oh let's put it on the wrong way. Yeah, genius. And I can shoulder this if I want to as well. Like that that's so stupid, man. It pisses me off so much. How you can own this and you can shoulder it, and the reason you can shoulder it, this this is how I know you can shoulder it. The ATF cannot, cannot dictate how you shoot your guns. I could take my pistol and, and shoot it like this if I wanted to, shoot it off my forehead so that way the slide comes back and beats my brains in. This is designed to be shot like this. You know, if you're aiming, you, this brace, you can brace this up against your forearm or whatever, and it's supposed to be a really, really lightweight gun because I'm gonna put a really short barrel on it. You know, that, that's the whole point. Like, you save money by not building an SBR, Anyone can legally own it. I could go sell this to somebody if I wanted to after I get done building it. I think I made my point. Y'all like my God of War t-shirt? So, yeah, to, to, to let you guys know the rest of the specs, it's going to be 556-223. Um, I'm going to do uh, a 7.5 inch barrel, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, I think that's about it. 
And then I'm just gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna order an upper receiver that's already pre-built, it's got the charge handle, the, the door, or the, and the, um, it's got the bolt carry group, um, the forward assist, and a, a hand guard already on it with a barrel and a, and a compensator or a flash hide or whatever you wanna call it. Um, Cause honestly, I think, I think that's gonna be a cheaper route for me in the long run. And plus this is just gonna be a gun that I'm gonna mess around with. It, it's a toy. And, and for most of us, that's all these guns are, are anyway, are toys. Not many guns these days are tools. Um, unless you use them for hunting. Like that's the only way that I would consider a gun an actual tool is you use it for a purpose. If you're just going plinking, just sh target shooting, it's a toy. And, and also for home defense as well. Like if it's for home defense, I would definitely consider that a tool. And I might use that for this. Um, if, it, if it proves itself in reliability, I may use it for home defense. And you know, like a truck gun, I, I might you know, keep it by the bed or whatever. So instead of having like 15 rounds or six rounds or however many bullets your pistol holds and grabbing it, you got you can pop a 30 round 30 rounder in that bad boy and have like a sh super short super agile um, home defense uh, gun, you know. So hey, that's cool. So yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. So w what did I say? You don't have to spend two hundred dollars on tax stamp. Anyone can own it. Anyone can build it. Anyone can have it with them uh, legally. And it's basically the same thing because you can shoot it any way you want to. So, yeah. That's that's it. That is it. So, we got our salsa. We got our sun kiss. We got our stabilizer. So, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go figure out where I like this, put in this set screw, and call that done. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this first episode, like this first official episode of Freilich's Arms. I am like unbelievably stoked about this channel. Like I'm, I'm super, super stoked about filming for this channel. It's gonna be so much fun because I love the Snowdrift channel and I love riding motorcycles. I love doing all that stuff, but it's just, it's just getting to be that time of the year. Whenever, whenever the cold months come and we're getting towards Thanksgiving and Christmas and, ooh, I love it. I love it. I just. I remember just, I get the, the smell of hops gun cleaner in my nostrils and it's, oh, it's amazing. So uh, that's good. That's going to be it for this episode, you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.